Now, even though it's kind of fun to watch points move up, we also want to make new points and put them into the world using the mouse. So how are we going to add new points? Let's design a function to do that. Let's have a function called add two couple of points. It's going to take a point, a new one, and a current couple of points. And it should give us back a new couple of points that has that new point added. Let's call the given point P and the given couple of points CP for short. Now it's really important that we write some examples for this function. We can use the data examples for a couple of points we wrote before as examples that could be inputs to add to a couple of points. For example, what if add to a couple of points were to be given a new point, let's say it's 5100, and we need to add it to CP0. So remember, add to a couple of points takes two inputs, a point and a couple of points. So in each example for the function, we need to give an example point and an example a couple of points. So let's say this is an example point, that's a new point, and then this is the couple of points we had before maybe on the screen in the Big Bang. CP0 is defined here, it's just make none. So if we have no point to start with and we add this new point, what should we get? Well, if we had no point and we have the point, then we should get one point. And we have a way to store that. It's a make one. So let's put make one and then this new point. And then that's it. Now, it turns out that this expected output is the same as CP1. So I'm just going to type CP1. But you don't have to. You can just type out the definition of CP1. Okay, so that's our first example. Basically, if you compare CP0 to CP1, the difference is the new point, make point 5000, has been added. So the result of adding 5000 to CP0 should be CP1. Okay. So that's a good example because, again, we need to have examples for every possible kind of input. And we have three possible kinds of input. And this is the first kind of input uh, being exemplified. Let's look at another example for a different kind of input. Instead of adding to a make none, let's add to a make one. So CP1 is a couple points that's made using make one. That's a different kind of input from CP0. So what if we add a point, let's say 3080 to CP1? Well, CP1 has 5100. We're adding 3080 to it. So we should actually get CP2. And here, by the way, I'm kind of making putting a new point in front. I'm always sort of keeping that new point as the first point and the old point as the second point. So I, I, I get CP2 out. Because if you notice from the animation we're going for, we always want to retire the oldest point. Okay, so when you click on a new place, the oldest place goes away. Now let's write one more example, which we need because again we need to have examples for every possible kind of input. And so far we have no example where the input is a make two. So what if we're adding a new point to a make two, like CP2. CP2 is a make two. Well, now we're forced to drop a point because we have no way to have three points. So we can't just say, oh, you have two points, so we add one, now we get three. We have to drop a point. And we decide to drop the oldest point. So we drop 5100, and we keep 3080, and we put that next to 200, 300, and that's CP3. So that's our third example for the function add to a couple of points. Now, you see how by writing data examples, we get to write more concise function examples that reuse the same data. Okay? And that's a great reason that we write data examples whenever we write down data definition. All right, so we're done with step three of the design recipe. We have some examples. We have an example for every possible kind of input. What template should we use? we should use the same template as we had before. Here's that template again. We're going to rename process couple points to add to a couple points. And remember that because this function takes an extra 
point as input, we have to take that point and put it in the header. That point is along for the ride. Okay, and that's it. We're done with the template. Let's move on to step five, actually writing the definition. We are going to look at each of these examples and they are going to help us write each of the cases in the definition. So here is the none case. And the example says, oh, you should make a one case out of the none case. So uh, we're going to use make one, which is in the definition of CP1, and we're just going to give the point P to make one. So that's going to put in the example 5100 in the object. What about the second case? What if the input already has one point? Well, according to our second example, the output should be made using make2. That's in the definition of CP2. And we need to give two points to make2. The first point is the new point P, such as 3080. The second point is actually just the first point, the only point in the existing couple points CP. So here, we don't actually need to process that point. I'm just going to delete process point. And that's our second case. Finally, how we're going to fill in the case where the input is already made with make2, like CP2. Well, if we look at CP3, that's made with make2. And that's what we should put in our definition. Make2 takes two points. We're going to use P for the first point and the two first of CP for the second point without processing it any further. So that will be 3080 in the example here. And we don't need, and we cannot actually squeeze in the two second of CP at all. So I'm just going to delete that. All right, that may be it. Let's see if this function works. Ah, let's delete the header so that the computer is not confused about what to run. And while I'm at it, let's also delete the big band because we don't want to test it right now. Okay, the test passed. 